you might see a there we go all right well hello everyone thank you all for coming tonight virtually and to anyone else who's watching this on our youtube channel we've got a great evening in store we have four wonderful staff here from our elementary department and also from a student support services we have chelsea kirsten michelle and heather So tonight we're focusing on our elementary program and we have our four staff here. They'll take turns presenting and once that's done, we'll open it up for questions. Anything related to our elementary department. First, we'll stop the recording and then we'll open it up for questions. Enjoy. Okay, can everyone see my screen? This is Chelsea speaking. Yes, we can. Okay, well, happy Tuesday. Yes, we are the elementary from MSAD. And first of all, my name is Chelsea Paulson. I have been teaching 11 years. I grew up in the mainstream environment. Hello, I am Michelle Heisey. I am teaching for 28 years and graduated from uh, MSAD as an alumni. Uh, now I'm teaching for fifth grade here at MSAD. Hello, I'm Kirsten Mulally, and I've been teaching seven years so far at MSAD for the last five years. Uh, mainstreamed and then transferred to the school at MSAD. So I also graduated from here and I'm teaching second and third grade this year. I have experience teaching second and third grade at that typical age. MSAD Elementary is a bilingual program, both ASL and English that parallels each other. We use that curriculum. Oh, I forgot. I realized that we introduced ourselves as teachers. We had practiced through our presentation, but we forgot to introduce Heather. And Heather is saying, hello, my name is Heather Breitbach. Um, my sign name is this. And I'm at the school psychologist at MSAD and I've worked at MSAD for six years now. And I work from ages two all the way up to 21. Yes, we're so happy to have Heather on our mental health team. It is the best team. <laughs> So this is Chelsea speaking. Uh, Michelle, if you could talk about our <laughs> bilingual approach. Sure, for a long time, we've been teaching bilingual ASL and English as they work together. In all of our curriculum, we coordinate the ASL and English. Kristen is saying our curriculum, we have a variety of things that we will explain later. Our curriculum parallels with the state standards. We follow that from the state of Minnesota and process through those in our curriculum. Now, speaking of curriculum, we also do evaluations and Heather is where she ties in. And we're really spoiled at MSAD to have staff on campus that do those evals. We also have district testing such as NWEA, MAP, and Minnesota Comprehensive Assessments, the MCAs. If MSAD does not provide a class that students are interested in, kids can also go to our neighboring public school, Roosevelt Elementary School. The curriculum that you have that we use here, you can see are all here. It's McGraw Hill, Wonders, and My Math, and Fingerspelling Our Way to Reading. Uh, all of those are listed. We have all of these that are here, and we can expand upon them. Math, we use My World, Social Studies, we use FOSS. And second step. So we've been using these for quite a while. What is BGC? Kirsten, can you explain that? So we're lucky to have BGC. <laughs> it's a bilingual curriculum. It's a new curriculum that we were very excited to start using. 
our students, uh, deaf and hard of hearing students, work with reading, writing, grammar. There's curriculum out there, but it's very hearing based, audio based. So our children are focused on struggling sometimes in picking up that language base. Sometimes that curriculum doesn't work for them. This curriculum helped us to really make those connections, to use the different strategies, working with grammar and writing, ASL and their English, and parallel those together. BGC it works with that, and ASL grammar structure is very different, but we process through that and make that correlate to their English structure. So it gives the support and parallels and benchmarks are seen in both areas. Our students have seen such great growth with their language and grammar and writing to be able to express that in ASL and English. We also use a bedrock reading curriculum and other, other curriculums to work through that in parallel in types of reading strategies that best fit our deaf and hard of hearing students and how we understand and translate uh, those skills into both languages. It is hard work to navigate between curriculums and navigate between languages. Michelle teaches fourth and fifth grade. I also teach that grade level as well. And for science class, for example, when we're teaching about land formations in my class and Michelle teaches about the 50 states in the United States, we expose kids to that concept, those concepts and language that we use when we talk about geography and different parts of our country. And it ties into science class. And we're also learning about our country, which they're talking about in Michelle's class. What are you learning now, Kirsten? In science, we are using hydro plant nice. hydro plants how they use uh plants in water so we're using different aspects on how to see that at different grade levels so at my third grade level that's what we're working right now is hydro plants yeah it's really fun um heather could you explain more about second step and sel and heather is saying sure can you see me okay Okay, okay, great. Second step is, that is a, a name our, our social emotional learning curriculum or SEL curriculum. And we use that with our kindergarten students through fifth grade students. And that incorporates lots of different skills that are important for kids to have depending on their age level. That includes like identifying feelings, managing their emotions, what knowing what to do when they feel angry, how to calm down if they're ever feeling upset. It also focuses on friendship skills, like how to make friends, how to maintain friendships, how to solve conflicts and problem solving skills too. And so we do a combination of things with that curriculum. We do some work inside the classroom. We might come in and teach a second step lesson. We also work closely with our elementary teachers and we provide teachers with activities and lessons related to different skills that students will be learning. And then teachers provide that curriculum lesson. And we've been using that curriculum for about four or five years now. We love it. Yeah, and we see that spiral. Mm -hmm. Kirsten? Sure, going back to the finger spelling, that is uh, finger spelling our way to read. In the elementary program, kindergarten to about second grade, a little bit into third grade, it spirals upward and it focuses on how to read, how the finger spelling is encompassed into the writing and how we divide up the words, how we break them down, how we use decoding skills for deaf and hard of hearing students. Using word families, those types of things, which is great for that curriculum. Yes, decoding skills are great. Okay, yeah, so lots of curriculum. It's not all work and no play because that makes a child dull, right? Either Jack or Jill. 
We also do have enrichment time in our school, which we enjoy having. And kids love having that like gym class, library time, art class, deaf studies, technology class. That is great and it really benefits our children. And we learned about deaf studies so kids can identify their identity and who they are as a deaf person, whether they're identify as a hard of hearing person or a totally deaf person. They still belong in the deaf and hard of hearing community. And along with our library, we also have the Minnesota Resource Library for both the blind and the deaf. And so we are very resourceful. We have tons of resources that people can check out from us. We like to play while we learn. Okay, uh, field trips, guest speaker, what's that all about? Yes, all of our academics plus the enrichment is a perfect balance that our kids really enjoy hands-on activities. We focus those navigational tools through what we do outside of the classroom. So all of those experiences are impactful. And of course, we love field trips. So what we learn in education applies to our field trips. We really enjoy having them go out to the science museum and that applies to our science fair or other choices. We go to the apple orchard for our little K through second graders. How do apples come through? And it shows them the healthness. Uh, we go to pumpkin patches and the zoo. We love the zoo as well. Researching those animals uh, we go to the recycling center and go to plays. There's a long list of field trips that we access. It's a really rich experience for students to see what they're learning and make it applicable. Yes, teachers are always really tired after a field trip. So happy. Actually, we have a field trip tomorrow. Oh. And during COVID, we weren't sure how to manage all activities and guest speakers through COVID. So we had a lot of virtual things happen and kids got to ask questions and make sure they were visible in front of the computer. So it was great, even though COVID did happen. Can you back up just one slide, please? I do just want to add, this is Kirsten, uh, the school-wide events as well. So what we are doing out in the community and what's happening in the world, what's happening in the lives out in the community. Uh, recently, there was uh, ASL month. So we took the opportunity to have ASL day. We did different activities related to our language and we really enjoyed showing that, uh, doing craft activities, uh, signing books to the students. Uh, on Earth Day, we expose them to why we do things. Why do we help the Earth? Why do we keep them safe and clean? How do we work together to do these things? The Read In or Read Across America, uh, we do that at the beginning of March. We have a book fair and we pick the top eight books what the trends are, what we feel we need to cover and expose our students to. <laughs> As they read, they also vote and pick the top one out of those books. So we do that for the last two or three years in working with the book fair. We have many celebrations that we get together with such as homecoming. Not only that, but as an elementary, we also do school-wide events, not just uh, our elementary, but ECE all the way to 21. So that has been a past experience. Science fairs, uh, spelling bees, things like that. We really feel that those items are important to our school and it's a Founders Day in September. We focus on that annually to show and why we care about MSAD and the history that we have. There's so many wonderful things that our school year does, we do during the school year. And we love that camaraderie of getting together from the littles all the way up to age 21. Those are great aspects of our school. Michelle is saying definitely our activities are a favorite. Yes, ASL Heritage Day. Yes, that's always the best. 
Okay, now the next thing, we've got a little surprise. Hashtag fist kiss ASL MSAD why? That's why. Yes, that's why. That's why we love MSAD. So the importance is the students having the academic, the enrichment, the bilingual ASL English, having the identity to have the growth, sports, and all of these activities become the whole child. It becomes the growth of a person. The students feel very prideful. They have their identity because of all these experiences that we provide that becomes the person who they can become. Definitely. And next, we know that we have our education, our school that makes the whole child, but we also have more services to offer. Yes, this is Heather. We actually have a large student support services department that offer a variety of services if students do qualify for those services. We offer ASL services. We're fortunate enough to have an ASL specialist that provides one-on-one -on -one services for those students that do need it. And we provide class-wide services as well. We offer interpreting services for students that take mainstream classes or students that transfer to MSAD and they're still learning ASL. They might need some voice support at the beginning for the first few weeks. We also offer audiology services, OT, PT services, that's occupational therapy and physical therapy services. We also do some outreach evaluations for outside school districts or community members who maybe don't have certain assessment people on their team, so they'll collaborate with us. We have a school psychologist. We actually have two school psychologists that provide assessment services. We have a school social worker who is fluent in Spanish, who does offer a lot of support for our Spanish speaking families and help connect families with community resources and help support our families with what they need. We also have two wonderful school counselors that provide intensive counseling services on a variety of topics. Some are mental health support related, some are just emotional regulation, both one-on-one -on -one or in group therapy. We also have two SLP, speech language pathologists, and that picture is one of them. And our SLPs focus on communication needs that our student have, students have. We also offer transition evaluations and that may not apply to our elementary students here. That's more for older students like high school age or students who are getting ready for graduation or entering the adult world soon. That evaluation helps them find what areas they may still need support with before they're done with school. So we get them the resources that they need before they leave. We also have nursing services here for our students that do have some medical needs. And lastly, we're very fortunate to have a partnership with Vona. That's a center for mental health. And they have several mental health therapists that do come to our campuses a few times a week to provide more intensive mental health therapy. That's more of a clinical approach for our students who need those services. They also work with families to provide family therapy if a family does so need that. So yes, lots of services available. And they're all for the students, Chelsea is saying. That's the most important person here, the student. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Kirsten. Sure. If you're curious to gather more information or if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to this. Here's our contact information. We also have different things listed here that you can go into and click these links. We have social media outlets and platforms that we use. We use Linktree, and that will link you to different items on our campus. We have Facebook as well as Instagram, and that is at MSAD Trojans. 
And then we also have our YouTube site that shows us different videos and things that are happening on our campus. You'll be able to view those. You can see our email addresses for the four of us that are listed here. If you're curious to ask us more questions, feel free to reach out at any time. Yes, please. Okay, I'm going to sh stop sharing my screen or I'm going to try to. And this is Anne Grace. Okay.